just about 600 years in London and the outskirts. There were only two bridge crossings. London Bridge, which I've mentioned on many tours, and is still there. Obviously, the one there now is a bit newer. But that was the main bridge. And then you had one about 14 miles away, about 22 kilometres, in Kingston-upon-Thames. So there were no intervening road or walking crossings. So people had to get ferries. And there were around 30,000 watermen at one point, ferrymen who would take you over the river. And then an intervening bridge was built in Putney, which is a bit further southwest from here. And that was built in 1729. And I do a little footsteps tour of Putney Bridge as well. There's some amazing history there. And then the bridge we're walking over was opened in around 1750. The bridge before, it's sadly uh, over the years subsided. So they built a new one, but the original in 1750 was built under the supervision of a man called Charles Labelle. Swiss engineer. The problem was the watermen, the ferrymen, like the modern day cabbies, objected because they said in this area, if you had a bridge, then their services are no longer required. And they came up with a solution the London Corporation, which was like the local government, said, well, we'll have toll booths so you can pay to get onto the bridge and will compensate you for any work lost. Local government were worried that the watermen would find other work. And then there wasn't a, a workforce, there was any war or any naval activity wanted, there would be nobody to do it. So they got, they, they got compensated somewhat. The lamps are just beautiful. So Big Ben is the bell, and it was made by the Whitechapel Bell Foundry. So you've got the Elizabeth Tower, which is uh, the, the clock face in front of you. And then at the top of that, there's a bell called Big Ben. And the Whitechapel, which is further east from here, Whitechapel Bell Foundry also made the Liberty Bell, and a bell which is now used at the top of the Globe Theatre to signify the start of a show. After 1750, it paved the way for four other bridges, Blackfriars, Kew, Battersea and Richmond Bridge were all opened in the next 30 years. And the history of them all are fascinating. Let me just show you Something here. Terry. I just want to show you these things here. Now, sadly, if uh, if it was a sunny day, you'd be able to see a nice little uh, shadow here. And I'm just going to grab my phone, my other phone. I wanted to show you what happens at about two o'clock in the afternoon if it's a sunny day. It's maybe an architectural joke, maybe it was just a mistake, but if you imagine that the sun is quite low and these uh, like clubs really, they look like if the sun was shining through them, it would look like this. So I do apologise for that, if there are any children watching. But that is the look you get about one o'clock in the afternoon, just around Prime Minister's question time. I don't know if there's any reference to the people that are in the building behind. Let's not, let's not say anything. Yes, yeah, someone definitely made a mistake. Or maybe they said it was a mistake, maybe they, they did it on purpose. The bears can't stop laughing, or can stop laughing. Ah. 
It is lovely. It's a great bridge to walk over at night. And then you get the beautiful wide part of the River Thames here in the distance. Now, all the buildings you see in front of you are in the last 10 years have been built in Vauxhall, which there is a bridge going over towards Victoria. And it's pretty crazy that these have all sprung up in the last 10 years or so. It used to be a lovely view as the river turned round towards Battersea, but these are mostly apartments with a few office blocks. It's become a new central hub like Docklands in the east. So as I was saying, in the uh, 1800s, the bridge was subsiding quite badly. So they designed a new one, the one we're on today, a seven arch cast iron bridge. So this one opened in 17, sorry, 1862, this one. And these Gothic lamps and the detailing were designed by a man called Charles Barry. He was one of the main designers of the Palace of Westminster or the Houses of Parliament behind us. Alex from Houston has said, Big Ben was covered with scaffoldings when we visited. Look at it now. It's only half covered. Hi, Ellie G. Hi, Paul Stefan. We're on Westminster Bridge. After the new London Bridge opened in the late 1960s, this has now become the oldest existing road structure which crosses the river in central London. And in recent years, they've created a cycle path and put some iron impediments or bollards on the way. You may know a few years back, it was quite a tragic incident, incident a terrorist attack on the bridge. So as well as creating the cycle lane, it creates safety so no vehicles can mount the pavement. Now people may know the bridge from certain films. 28 Days Later is probably the most famous example. It's completely deserted. Killian Murphy wakes up in his hospital bed and he realizes there's been a zombie attack. <laughs> That's nice to talk about. Doctor Who, the invasion, the Dalek invasion of Earth. They turn up here as well. There's no steps on the bridge that was easier for the Daleks to get across. I think they tried to get over the Hungerford Bridge closer to Charing Cross and they realized they couldn't go up the stairs. There's no need to laugh, folks. It's, it's okay. I know, I know it was bad. And uh, two Bond movies as well. And, and that's a nice view. Gillian has apologised for being a bit late. Don't you worry, Gillian. And the connection looks a bit low, but hopefully you folks can still can still hear and see quite well. Looks nice. Looks great. Thank you, Beverly. They're doing a lot of restoration work because it is crumbling a bit neo-gothic style, gothic revival. It took about 30 years to finish, opened in the 1870s. Uh, some of it has survived from the, well, from the 1500s inside it. There was a royal palace here in the 11th century, but uh, in 1512 there was a fire and then a palace called the Palace of Whitehall was constructed, which is a bit further towards Trafalgar Square, you know, 10 Downing Street. That's on Whitehall. So the architects were a man called Augustus Pugam, P-U-G-I-N, and Charles Barry. I have been in there, certain parts of it. You can go on lovely tours. I just want to give you a view the scaffolding coming down. Certain rules, formal attire has to be worn, so shirt and tie for men. Hats must not be worn, no military insignia. You're not allowed to have your hands in your pockets and applause in the House of Commons is not allowed. That's why we hear all the strange noises 
why are you here? <laughs> why do politicians do that? So they, they have all of these rules, but uh, having parties in the middle of a national lockdown is not one of those rules. Sorry, that's controversial. And the color is verdigris of the bridge. Sorry. That's right, people apologize in Brussels. Um, it's a free city. Uh, so verdigris is a shade of bluey green and it's actually, it actually matches the, the color of the seats in the House of Commons, just to give you a closer example. That's the colouring there. And then although it's lit, Lambeth Bridge, the next bridge, is uh, coloured red, like the seats, matching the seats of the House of Lords. So you have two houses, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. My goodness, we could talk a lot about this. Is it true that the Houses of Parliament has its own quite old aircon system? Uh, possibly, possibly. I mean, it's an old building, and I know that a lot of the West End theatres that we've wandered around, if you've come with me, uh, quite a few of them weren't allowed to put proper air conditioning in because they were worried that a temperature change might damage the structure of a building that had been there a couple of hundred years. They were worried about that with Drury Lane. So quite a few of the theatres, and maybe Parliament's the same, has uh, they have air cooling which are vents around the building and they just open the vents and they have narrow funnels where the air can cool as it comes through the steel pipe so it's possible that it's an old-fashioned air cooling system but actually having said that drury lane in the last year has put in some really good air conditioning. Andrew Lloyd Webber has spent 70 million on the building doing some restoration. He's not short of the money, but it helps that some of these old theatres are owned by rich people rather than being taken over just to make money. So he spent a lot of money on it.